when it comes to grave and tragic evils in the world. Rape, murder, cancer, injustice. Here's what I found. I found that these things have a way of pointing us to God in the way that little evils do not. We often question and say, you know, I'm okay with God having little evils in the world like stubbed toes and curse words, but not the Holocaust. Why the Holocaust? Why Nazis who used babies as machine gun target practice? But what if, brothers and sisters, it's the big sins and the big evils that demonstrate our brokenness and our need for God? What if without the big evils in this world, we would never turn to God? Humans have this problem. Deep down, we think we're pretty good. We just had a little more education and a little more money and a little more science. All the problems in the world would go away and we'd have world peace. Is that that, not the narrative of every graduation speech ever? But what if that would never be the case? What if the reason we have so many blessings right now is because God is good and he causes it to rain on the just and the unjust? What if God has been taking care of us every moment of our lives and every perfect and good gift comes from above? And the reason you're so good and your kindness is because God has blessed you. And the reason we have peace is because God has blessed us. And yet somehow we forget that all of life is God's grace. And we start giving credit to the creation and ourselves rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. God blesses us with technology. He blesses us with weather. He blesses us with providential circumstances. And yet we somehow think we can do it without him. And so we try to live apart from God. There is no life apart from God. And I think the reason God allows us to experience these great evils is it reminds us, I don't have it all together. Sin's a really big deal. I can't live life without him. And we realize how lost we truly are when he withdraws his hand of blessing from us. I can give you an analogy. The other day I was trying to help my son, Sam, ride a bicycle without training wheels. He's never done it before. First time. So the way you do this, I was researching this, you got to hold like the back of the seat or you can like hold their hips and, and you follow them around as they're riding their bike, right? That's how they learn to ride their bike. After a little while, Sam says, Dad, let go. I can do it. I said, son, no, you can't. Uh, the, re- the reason you're so good right now is because I'm, I'm holding the seat. Starts crying. Dad, let me do it. I can do it, Dad. You, you don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. I don't need your help. So I let go. Sam was not able to ride his bike on his own. He was utterly convinced he could do it. But he failed to realize it was because his father's hands held him and guided him. Every pedal, every turn. After a while, Sam came to the realization he could not do it on his own. Brothers and sisters, the main point of this life is to realize we exist for the one who made us. We can't do it without his hands. I saw a funny meme the other day and said, you know, people are upset that, you know, you need Jesus to go to heaven. Listen, you need Jesus to go to Walmart, right? You can't do anything without him. The whole problem of this world is we think we can live life apart from God. We got these utopian dreams of grandeur. We're going to build our Tower of Babel generation after generation after generation. This is the war to end all wars. we are finally got it figured out. If you just give us our money, we'll solve the problem. Church, God gives breath in your lungs. And the only way you will enter into the kingdom of God is humble, dependent children. That's what Jesus said. But when we start crediting ourselves, instead of the Creator, God must break us of our arrogance. I'm not saying that's the only reason that great evil happens, but it might be one of them. And we need to think about God's purpose in the world.